What's up? SES. We in here cleaning up and stuff. But uh, I'm about to come to y'all with another. Daddy. Yeah. All right, so I'm back. Logan waited to the last minute to tell me she wanted some food when I kept asking her. So that's what I just had to do. But uh, today I'm gonna show y'all how to make a speaker box. So what I'm gonna do initially is come to this trunk and measure some stuff, see what I can get away with. And then I'll go onto RE Box Calculator, which I was talking about on a live stream a few days ago. And then we'll go to the store and get some, I want to do birch, but uh, birch is pretty expensive. MDF is what I've been using for quite some time. All right, the lighting is going to be pretty bad. I can already tell, but uh, we still going to proceed to make the video. Y'all can see I'm in the trunk. So the first thing I'm going to measure here is hinge to hinge. Because the box needs to fit between the hinges. All right, I got that. All right, got my hands to hands. Now you want to measure. Now you want to measure this. Yeah, open it. But I know I'm not. I'm not going this deep at all. So got that. Now I'm gonna measure from this tire mount hump to the top of the trunk. All right, now I'm gonna measure from the back to how, how deep I think I'm gonna go, which is probably about here. Somewhere back, somewhere up here. Something like that. All right, now that I got that, I'm gonna come to my speaker. I'm gonna take it out the phone real quick. All right, now that I got my speaker, I'm gonna measure. I know Phillips come with different numbers, so that's why you need to measure right about now because you might not have the height that you think you have. So, let's see, I got about 15 and a half. All right, now this is where you go put all those numbers into the uh, box calculator app, which some people do use on the phone, some people use on the computer, but I'm gonna go downstairs to my computer so I can actually go to Home Depot early in the morning and have the dimensions cut out for me because I don't have a wood panel saw. Let me, let me put this stand on, hold on. All right, so I don't have a wood panel saw. One of those is what's used in the video when I drop about this sunroof. Or you all could just Google a uh, wood panel saw. So, wood panel saw can cut a full sheet of wood with no problem, absolutely no problem. Now, when you're using a table, a table uh, saw, width becomes an issue. My table saw can only go past, I mean, can only hit around 12 inches, which is not a lot when uh, a big sheet of wood is like 96 inches. So now I'm gonna take these numbers, plug them into the RE box calculator. But first I'm gonna go and look up the specs for the subs that I'm using. That's the first thing you gotta do. Now, cut y'all on on this computer. All right, so I actually found a tech sheet for these subs in one of the uh, phones. And I'm gonna walk y'all through the numbers real quick. All right, so what we're using is a SA15D4. Let me get you. Get it to focus. Boom, so this is our line. Now you got FS, VAS, QE, all that stuff come in place when you're using the sub for a T-line box, which we're not using, and they don't get the specs for it because it all varies. Now, port it and uh, sealed. Same specs for a dual two or dual four. So we're going to port it. And we see we need seven cubic feet for two subs. Seven. And they recommend you tune it to 35 
but I, I'm going with 33. 33 is what I like. You know what? I go 34. Meet them in the middle. The tune will get you some bang. Like, you a bang. Alright, so the tune, it will actually give you bang with no matter what music you're playing if you go with the recommended specs. So if you're playing something with straight bass and Gucci, something like that, it's going to bang. Alright? And it's at the low frequencies. Then if you put some, uh, some Dusties on some Marvin Gaye and it don't have any low notes, you're not going to hear as much bass in that lower tuning frequency. But if you go with a mid, you'll have both. You won't have as much on the on the low notes, but you will have steel a lot. Now, some people build demos, low frequencies, just to straight flex the car, break windows, stuff like that. This is not the case. We're just trying to sound good, make a little bit of noise. Now, we're not gonna have a test for it till the car is actually running or a battery is put in and we can get a, a test on it. But uh, let's get on this computer, build this box real quick, and then tomorrow morning we'll go get it cut. Let me float on top. I'm learning how to work this stuff here. Found out I can't click full screen, so it's taking me a little bit longer. So you're gonna go to RE Box Calculator. I just put calc. RE Audio. You're gonna click to use flash. We use every time for this because this this one is pretty interesting. Alright, so L ported box. Let me let me show you all L ported box. So when you use an L ported box, right? This is what's gonna happen. You can either take that L and put it in the middle, or you could get half of what this is and move it to both sides, or you can just keep it an L. So what I'm gonna do is move it to the middle, so my uh, sound and my pressure and everything could be even. So I played with my width. And as y'all see, I say uh, we're trying to get to 30, 34 hertz. The cubic feet is going to be 7. Uh, and let me see if that's after displacement. After displacement means after the speakers are in. So displacement is 0.17. So we're going to try to make this box... Uh, point two, seven point three four, and that'll give us seven cubic feet after displacement for both subs. So let's see, forty. I know I want a max height of sixteen. A depth, how deep can I go? You start with thirty. The wood size is gonna be three quarters, so we're gonna keep that the same. Port width. Uh, let's make both of them the same, 30. All right, you see? We got eight feet, so we got too much box right here. Now we got to get some port. Port width, three inch. Nope, too little. But the box uh, volume went down. The cubic feet went down. The tuning frequency went lower. So we can make the port longer. Five. Eight inch. See the tuning frequency box. So now that means we gotta make both of these smaller and make the box a little, the port smaller, the box a little bigger, and that'll give us what we want. It's easy. It's pretty easy, man. You just gotta work with it. It's no stamped way on how to build a box. So I'm gonna build my box, and then right here at the bottom, make sure y'all check out at the bottom, right here. It'll give you your cutout. So you got your bottom. Literally your bottom. The bottom and the top is always the same. So I call it the nail in the coffin. So this is what you start your box with. And this is what you close it off with. Left plate, right plate. And this is what an L ported box. Make sure y'all keep that in y'all uh, mind. An L ported box, meaning it's an L on one side. I'm going to eventually change this. And then the way you change it. So once again, you got the L right here. And this is your port. What you're doing is moving this L directly to the center. Take some calculating now. It's just not something that you're going to just pop up with and it's so easy. So you're going to take this front face directly center. Whatever your port is, you're going to put that port in the center. 
this port wall, you're going to subtract by, I mean, you're going to uh, divide by half. And you'll have two port walls. So you'll have two of these L's in the middle. Half of this port wall will be on one side and the other half on the other side. So what we said, we got eight inches, right? So four inches will be on this side and four inches will be on the other side. That's how you calculate for a slot, a middle slot ported box. It's the same exact numbers as a L ported box. And it'll be the same way if you did dual ports. So if you did dual ports, uh, this is an eight inch port, it'll be a four inch port. And then two inches here. And then you'll stick the other side with the other half of the measurement. So it'll be the exact same measurements on the other side, which will give you the same exact numbers. Pretty easy how it works. You just got to play with it. Um, so yeah, like I said, my front plate will be different from what you see here. And I'll have two plates for the front because I'll have two speakers. And then I'll have two port walls. And then I'll have two uh, port lamps. Two different ones. Because I'm not running with an L port. I mean with an L slot ported box. I'm going with a middle slot ported box. But uh, I'm going to make this box. And then... Cut y'all back on when I get to Home Depot. You on the camera now, don't mess it up. <laughs> oh no, nah, he don't do me like that. <laughs> hey, we, we almost there, man. We got top and bottom. I see how to cut like five inches off. All right, back on the sub with a box build. Check my lighting out. It's looking pretty all right, huh? Show y'all what I did. All right, I got this, uh, I had two of these. The other one, and I, I think it's still at the shop on the wall. So I got that facing my one car area and I got a lot going on. So I, like I said, I'm making them box Chevy consoles all over. I'm making all kinds of consoles all over, different, different designs, all kinds of stuff. I'm gonna make a whole separate video on that. But this is about to be my little workstation to put this silver box together. Um. <laughs> I haven't changed the wheels and tires. I need to look for this one socket. J-Rock says in my other box over there. And then I got the table saw for some cuts that I need to make and some 45s and some braces for the box. But uh, tonight I wanna try to get everything done as far as the bottom of the box and everything that goes in the middle. Possibly all the 45s and stuff like that. But this is what I'm using here for the bottom. But I have to cut like five inches off. I was just trying to get it cut enough to get it here. And then I was gonna do the rest. So let's see what we got. But uh, I definitely need to put up one more shelf to get all this stuff off my, my car. Definitely, but uh Yeah, I'm about to finish helping my daughter put uh put her bed together. I already put it together But she got sheets and now she want me to daddy come help me with my sheet. Didn't you say that? Yes So I'm about to go help her with that. Then I'm gonna come back cut this uh Shop back on make these cuts yeah. <laughs> Oh, that thing sound bad. Time for a cleaning. I'll cut y'all back on when I get back. Yes, yeah. All right, I'm back. So this is the actual base of the box. Made my cut. Came out okay. All right, so we got the base. Now, this is all the pieces. They go in the, in the uh, middle between the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna put all these up and then show y'all what it look like. All right, so is what we got nine inch port let me get my measuring tape nine inch port 7.4 cubic feet before displacement and I haven't I didn't I didn't care to count uh, for the 45 I'm putting in here so I'm gonna have a 45 here, basically a 45 is uh, two pieces of wood, like, well, a piece of wood that's cut on an angle, 
and then cut on the angle again and it's stuck in the corner so you don't get uh, air trapped. It's going to push it to flow to the port. So one going to go in both corners and then I'm going to do two 45s to get together connected here in the middle and it's going to force when both speakers are playing the 45s will push and push and the middle 45s will push, it, push the air out. So, yeah, this is exactly what we have besides our 45s and the top on. Looks pretty good. Now, glue and screw. That's what I call it because that's all you're doing, gluing and screwing. You want to pre drill with MDF. <laughs> If you don't pre-drill, you will split your wood, guaranteed. So, I have a drill bit that is capable of drilling hard metal because every time I get the thin ones that's not for metal and I'm pre-drilling, they break. So, it's my first time trying with this one. Uh, I, I didn't wanna keep going back to the store and rumbling, rumbling through all my stuff because I know what's gonna happen. It always happens. So I'm getting my other battery right here. Uh, where's my other drill? Right here. All right, for the nails. For the nails, I use one and a half is the wood that you sticking through. So you got three quarters, and then you want to try to get the same in the top piece. So me personally, I just like to go a little bit over, and that's like the first thing past one and a half. All right, the glue, Type Bond 2. This is one of the better wood glues that I like to use personally because Type Bond 1 doesn't really work good with MDF and then Type Bond 3 doesn't really work good with MDF. So I like Type Bond 2, that's just me. Pre-drill bit I showed you all. I'm using two different drills. It's usually three because I use a drill to uh, countersink. A bit to countersink, but don't have it. I'm still going to countersink. I just need to look through. In fact, my wood box is right here. This bit is what I use countersink. I couldn't push that one all the way in. It kept making this fall. So something like this. I kind of want to make these 45s about eight inches, but uh, I feel like it'll restrict because there's not that much space right there. So I'm gonna just leave that there. And that'll be it with that one. But uh, yeah, it's not bad looking. So it's probably gonna take me about an hour to screw all these in. And then uh, go around and glue the edges. Then like you get literally have to glue all around in the inside. You're gonna glue in between, all around in the inside, and then silicone on the inside. All right, one more thing. The way you put the box together, me, I like to do the back, bottom and the back, then I do my sides, then I do the front, then I do the port, then I do all the 45s, if I have 45s. Now, when you make the back to the bottom, you may have an overlap if you let Home Depot do it, like I do. And basically, you just, you can wing it to the other side, or you could measure what you have to cut off and put that on this side Whoa. and come and come by with a, with a router or a sander, make it even. But uh, I'm gonna just see what I got hanging off, make that same mark over here, and then I'll make this end at the same point. And then I just come around with my router and clean it up. But uh, yeah, that's how I do it. Bottom, back, Sides, 
front porch 45s. So this is what we got. About to get ready to cut my holes. So when I cut my holes, this is what I do. Oh yeah, for, for, this port, for the port wall, I'm gonna give y'all some tips. Um, it might look like this cricket, but it's not. I had to redo the line, and I redid it to the line on this side. But uh, when you put these port walls in, I like to drill, pre-drill then drill two screws to hold it in, right? Flip the box up, or what I did in this case, I put the speaker in on this side, on the heavy side, and let the weight hold it up, and that just went under the box. This stuff can get kind of heavy. Birch is lighter, that's why I think I want to start moving over the birch, but uh, you're gonna pay for it. Um, yeah, this is my first time doing a bracing like this. I just put those directly in the, in the middle. Then same thing with the 245s right there. First time doing that. But uh, 45s in the corner, I always did that when I was getting it on. But uh, for the cutouts, I think it said 14.1. I'm about to go check the sheet. But what I like to do, put the top on, and then you can get a piece of wood, like something like that, that's long, or two by four, whatever you got. I might just use my straight iron, my straight edge, I mean, and then go from the corner. You gotta put this on though, cause if you don't, you're gonna be three quarters off, three quarters down in the middle. Put the top on, make a straight line, make a straight line. Then in the middle is where your uh, hole gonna go. Same thing. And then I might have some screws down here I'm gonna take out. And then once I cut the hole, I put them back in, grind them down to where I want them. But uh, that's how I make my holes. And what I use to cut the holes with is a Makita router, plunge router. Let's be over here in my, in my tools. Got all the tools over here. And uh, that's not the bit I need. Hopefully, I got it. This is a circle jig. It's what you use to cut perfect circles. So. You got circles. This can go for the smaller routers, like the small little circle hand routers. And then this one, the big boy. You can make a circle all the way from two inches all the way to 18 and 15 sixteenths. So this is what I use when I make my sub boxes. So all speakers come with different size cutouts. A eight inch, a six and a half, they all gonna have different sizes, so. I get my drill, my little pre-drill hole, put this in there, in whatever size I want, and boom, I'll be there. No more jigsaw. I used to use a jigsaw though. I know a lot of people might laugh at that. Everybody, when they first start off making boxes, they cut their circle with a jigsaw. It's like, it's okay. But uh, I don't do that no more. I'm trying to be proficient and clean as possible. Uh, very professional. I want it to look like, hey, what shop you got that from? SES. But uh, yeah, that's how I've been doing it for the last, like, three years all right so this is what we got i also didn't put in you got to cut an angle but i can't put it put out all that info no more because uh ses is a real thing now wish i would have made this a little bit like two inches not even two inches an inch and a half skinnier because now i'm gonna have a a, a tight fit other than that Got lots of space, some space for amps, possibly, and then lots more space over there. But I kinda wanna put my amps in there, in the front piece. But uh, figuring it out, figuring it out. Um, I'm gonna go buy that bit so I can cut these circles, and then after this I'm working on the console for this and some other stuff. Will I show y'all that soon?